Ireland, full of breathtaking landscapes, ancient history, and urban chaos just waiting to be explored. And today, we're here with the top 10 things you can do in Ireland. So jump on board and grab your passports because you're in for a trip. Here we go. Number 10. Number 10 brings us to the Cliffs of Moher in County Clare. Rising up over 700 feet, these immense sea cliffs stretch out for around nine miles and provide for some very harrowing hikes. You'll want to be careful up here since high winds and muddy ground can make getting across them a little tricky. But you'll be treated to a wide variety of wildlife, including about two dozen species of seabirds who all make their homes around the cliffs. But be sure to give yourself about six to eight hours of daylight if you want to make it to the end and back before dark. There's no lighting to guide you, and it can get pretty scary on the cliffs at night. With a beautiful visitor center, gift shops galore, and an entrance fee of only $9, the Cliffs of Moher is Ireland's most visited tourist attraction. And it's pretty easy to see why. Number 9 Just outside of Dublin in County Meath sits the prehistoric site of Newgrange. Built somewhere around 3200 BC, this Neolithic mound is older than Stonehenge and the pyramids of Egypt. But exactly why and how it was built are still a mystery. Over 200,000 tons of stone, granite, and quartz went into the construction of this tomb. And it was so carefully built that once a year, on the winter solstice, light is able to get in through a special window all the way back to the central chamber, lighting it up for only 17 magical minutes. Tours run seven days a week, starting at the brand new Visitor Center and running all the way to Newgrange itself, where you'll learn about the area and get a chance to explore the inside. A three hour tour for only $15. Number eight. Ireland is home to many ancient features, but none quite like this. Scattered throughout the island are around 200 megalithic structures called dolmen. Most of them date to somewhere around 3500 BC and are made up of two or more vertical stones holding up a massive capstone. There are dozens of myths and legends around the dolmen, how they came to be there, what they are for, and so on, but each one has its own unique story to tell and still stand in incredible condition given how old they are. Visiting the dolmen are usually free and last as long as you want to stay, making them the perfect pit stops as you're cruising around the island. Number 7 Jumping up to Northern Ireland, we have number seven, the Giant's Causeway. Formed by lava some 60 million years ago, these basalt columns have worn away over time, leaving behind the wonderful formations you see here. Most of the area is walkable or climbable, with some columns stretching right out into the ocean. The whole trail runs about a mile and can be done in just a couple of hours. And access to the site itself is free, although the visitor center does charge to get inside. And check out the Giants Causeway Hotel, located right next to the trail. Its convenient location makes it the perfect place to rest up before moving on. Number 6 Welcome to Dingle Peninsula. Located on the lower west side of Ireland, Dingle Peninsula is home to some of the most beautiful countryside on the island. Here, you'll follow a single road that runs all the way to the town of Dingle itself, home to Fungi, the bottlenose dolphin. Tours run almost every day out to visit fungi and the other local sea life in the area. Visitors will also find the Galeris Oratory, a 12th century stone church, which is the only intact one of its kind. And on your way out, stop up top to take a look back from Connor Pass. Considered to be one of the most gorgeous drives in all of Ireland, we recommend taking your time and enjoying the view. Number five. Back in Dublin, we have the National Museum of Ireland. The National Museum covers both the archaeology and the natural history of Ireland. The Archaeology Museum focuses on recovered artifacts from around the island dating all the way back to 7000 BC. Here you'll find all kinds of exhibits from the famous Iron Age bog bodies to Vikings in Ireland and the Treasury Room filled with some of the most unique and culturally significant items in all of Ireland. Which takes us across to the Natural History Museum just on the other side of the courtyard. This building houses a stunning collection of over 10,000 various species arranged in an old world Victorian style. 
Tickets are free to both locations and can be booked online or in person, but donations are greatly appreciated. Number four. For the quintessential Irish getaway, head on down to County Wicklow and check out Glendalough, the Valley of the Two Lakes. This quiet town is home to St. Kevin, who built one of the oldest monastic sites on the island. The stone church here, the round tower, and the cathedral would have all been built around the same time and are still mostly intact to this day. And with hiking trails and picnic areas littered all around the place just waiting to be discovered, Glendalock makes the perfect stopover on anyone's day trip. Number three. Number three on our list is the Guinness Storehouse in Dublin. Constructed in 1902, this massive factory has been upgraded to seven whole floors of history, art, and interactive exhibits all about the black stuff. Guinness beer has been an Irish staple since the 1770s, and the recipe has been painstakingly perfected, leaving you with the chance to see the latest and the greatest in brewing techniques. Once you've made it all the way to the top, the gravity bar awaits. Here you can have the freshest pint of Guinness in the world while enjoying a full 360 degree view of the entire city. The Guinness storehouse is open seven days a week and entry is only $18. Number two. Our next stop brings us to Cork, the second largest city in Ireland. Nestled on the River Lee, this merchant city is buzzing with culture and charm. It's also a foodie's paradise with dozens of award-winning restaurants and bars around the city. Make sure to check out the English Market. Operating since 1788, you can find just about anything here from groceries to garments and a bunch, bunch more. And don't miss a chance to stop over at Blarney Castle, just outside of town, home of the beloved Blarney Stone. Built nearly 600 years ago, this massive estate offers tours every day for around $20 and gives visitors a chance to lean back under the walls, kiss the stone, and be blessed with eloquence forever. And with tons more to do around Cork itself, this is a town you truly don't want to miss. B -b -b bonus If you're lucky enough to find yourself in Dublin between March 14th to the 17th, be prepared for the mother of all parties because you'll be doing St. Patrick's Day in Ireland. Hundreds of thousands of people gather from all over the world to celebrate for the entire festival, all leading up to the big parade on the morning of the 17th. Then, it's more drinking and more partying on the night when everyone is Irish. Loud, obnoxious, and tons of fun, you'll be in for the best nights of your life. Number one. Taking the top spot on our list is the capital city, Dublin. We've already talked about a few of the things you can do here, but the city itself is simply a marvel to behold. Dozens of gardens, parks, and cathedrals litter downtown, each with a rich history dating back hundreds, sometimes even thousands of years. But don't let its age fool you, this city still feels vibrant and alive, with music being played on just about every corner. Named as Europe's friendliest city, Dublin combines natural beauty with old world wonder and exciting social scenes to create an experience you will never forget, making it the number one place you have to visit in Ireland. And there you have it, our top 10 things to do in Ireland. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share the video with all your friends. It really helps us out. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and have a great week.